Hello, good evening. Welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home here in a extremely wet and blustery Lime Bay. It is proper rainy today. We are well, Lola and I are just just we're 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 cuddled up all warm. I've got jumper on. Lola's curled up fast asleep as always, right behind me on her bean bag. But it's cold today. It's just not very nice. I saw a forecast. I don't know if it's going to happen or not because the weather forecasters in the UK do tend to be a a little bit rubbish and the newspapers just simply make stuff up here. I don't know what it's like where you are, but here in the UK, pretty much the, the newspapers don't seem to need any proof of anything. They just every year they tell it's it's going to be the hottest year on record and it's going to be the coldest. It's going to be the snowiest. It's going to be the wettest. But they just kind of make it up. Which is which is good. It's good that they don't have to actually have any element of truth in what they say because it makes reporting it obviously a lot easier. But I did see a report saying that we've got a lot of snow on the way later this month. I can't imagine that's right, but that's what they say. So proof of the pudding, as they say, is in the eating. We shall have to wait and see. Thank you anyway for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty midweek archive of old time radio shows right here. And my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett. I'm your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. Now, please do, if you get a minute, please check out our, our sister podcast. All you need to do is ask your device to play Sunday Night Mystery, or you could just look up Sunday Night Mystery, and it's there. The Sunday Night Mystery podcast. I think you'll like it. I've just written the one that we're going to be putting live this coming Sunday, and it's a bit of a belter. It's all about a murder that is still after oh, nearly 40 years unsolved. Pretty frightening stuff to think that there is still an individual out there who has, uh, well, been up to no good. Time now, though, for our latest adventure with Rocky Jordan. This one first broadcast on the 26th of March, 1950. It's called Foolproof. Now, Del Monte Foods brings you a world of adventure with... Rocky Jordan. Stupid, bumbling fool. I'm sorry, mister, and no harm done. No harm, you see. I'll very well show you. Hey, Rocky, come over here. Say, mister, what's the idea of the gun? You will never try that again. Never. Yeah, that goes all around, Buster. Give me that gun. Stop it, sir. Come Take on. your hands off of me. Not like get that gun. Yeah. It's how, how dare you, sir? How dare you? It always happens when customers come waving guns in the tambourine. You saw what he deliberately knocked from my pocket? Scattered like chaff on the floor? Diamonds, sir. Diamonds of incredible value. So they're diamonds. Rocky, I was just carrying a tray past this table. I happened to bump into him. And... Happened indeed. You haven't heard the last of this, sir. Not for one moment. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Yes, Del Monte, the best-liked brand of canned fruits and vegetables in the whole wide world, takes you now to the Cafe Tambourine in Cairo, gateway to the ancient East, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against a backdrop of antiquity. Tonight's Rocky Jordan story... (laughs) Foolproof. They always pick my cafe tambourine. Like the fat guy who had draped his 300 pounds over a chair at a corner table, sipped at a drink and waited for something. I kept watching because I'd seen him slide a gun under his coat lying on the table, and I didn't like it. When Chris bumped the table going by, a leather pouch hit the floor, and what came pouring out sparkled like a kid's eyes in a candy store. Mr. Fat whipped up with a gun, and it took me a good three seconds to get it away from him. You realize, sir... You have no right. I make all the rules in the tambourine, mister. They don't include guns. Honest, Rocky, it was just an accident. To deliberately knock the diamonds from my coat? Just pick them up, whatever they are. Yes. Yes. Here. I'll I'll help you. No, 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 don't touch them. Don't touch them. Uh, Have it his way, Chris. Uh, You got them now, mister. You know what to do. Uh, I, I suppose there's no harm done after all. Sure, it's past history. So before there's any more trouble... Wait, sir. 
Perhaps I should apologize. Nobody's asking it. I'm Mr. Hegeman, Sidney Hegeman. Carrying such valuable gems on my person made me nervous. When they were knocked to the floor, I, I automatically pulled the gun. I didn't mean anything by it. Well, the next time, you may automatically pull the trigger, so just move along. Good. Uh, I had an appointment here. Not anymore, you haven't. You give me no choice. About my gun? Now, wait a minute. Won't hurt anybody now. I right, take it and get out. Thank you, sir. Good day. It had all the elements. A fat guy, a gun, and a full of diamonds. They were gone, but I figured the forgetting wouldn't come so easy. Things don't happen that way. It took just 15 minutes for more to come. An excited, slim-built fellow with five feet six of nervous blonde clinging to him. They stood looking around like they expected somebody. And I didn't have to guess who. Eddie... Hey, I don't see him. Take it easy, Marguerite. This is the place. He said the tambourine. Well, yes, I know, but... Hey. It... Hey, you. Some folks call me that. You seen anything of a guy, a big fat guy? Called himself Sidney Hageman? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. He been in here? He's been in and out. Out? That was my idea. But I don't get it. He said to meet him here, it was all set. What was all set? Eddie, don't you no, see it? No, no, no. It's all right, baby. You heard what Hageman said. He wouldn't let us down. He could have changed his mind. Please, let's just go away and forget about it. Sure. Why don't you do that? He's right, Eddie. Don't you see now, it? Now, look, Marguerite. You wouldn't ask me to pass up my big chance, would you? It's the kind of deal I've been waiting for all my life. It'll put us on easy street. Us, Eddie? Of course, baby. You know I'm doing this for you. I just wish I could be sure. Well, just give me a chance, then. All we got to do is sit down and wait for him. Yeah, suit yourselves. Oh, hey, wait. He didn't ask for me. Eddie Gamble? Didn't say a word. Yeah. Well, maybe he'll phone and tell me where to meet him. You let me know. Yeah, I'll let you know. Uh, Rocky, come over here a minute. Who's it now, Chris? Behind the bar. I want to show you something. Yeah. Have a look at this. I just found it. One of Hageman's diamonds? Yeah. Must have rolled behind the leg of a chair when fat stuff dropped him. Accidentally missed it when he was picking him up. A beauty, ain't it? it? Looks real enough. Of course it's real. Anybody could tell that. Big one, too. Just like all the rest of them he had. Well, I'll take it, Chris. Oh, uh, keep an eye on that couple at the front table. One diamond could mean enough, but when people start getting dramatic about a whole fistful of them around my place, it's time the police were in on it. So my destination was Captain Sam Sabaya. But along the way, I decided to stop by a little jewelry shop run by the trusted Abu Symbol, just in case. Ah, it's in New Jordan, is it not? Hi, Mr. Symbol. Allah has been gracious. And you? The same. Say, would you mind looking at this for me? A diamond, if any? I want to know what you think. Permit me to observe it under the eyeglass. But a moment. What do you see from there? The diamond of great brilliance. And quite perfect for one of such size. Then it's real. Say, a whole bag full like it would bring quite a price, wouldn't you say? A very great sum. If uh, you wish me to name a price, I must make further tests. Oh, don't bother for now. Thanks, Mr. Symbol. You would guard it carefully, Effendi. Why so? It has been said that the diamond is but a star sent to Earth to give happiness. Should we not keep it so? Sure. I'll remember that. Well, Jordan, what brings you to headquarters this time? Maybe nothing, maybe a lot, Sam. <laughs> Must you always prepare me for what you have to say? Come, Jordan. No, it's about this diamond. It's a real one, too. I had it checked. What about it? A big guy named Hageman had a whole sack full like this at my cafe this afternoon. He uh, happened to leave this behind. Then you have only to return it to him. I'm wondering, have there been any big diamond thefts lately? No, none that has been reported. Just the same, you better look up, Hageman. Why, Jordan? You must know that diamonds are not uncommon in Africa and surely not in Cairo. What do you expect me to do? Nothing you don't want to do, Sam. If you wish to leave the stone for lost and found... No, no, no. If Hageman comes back, I'll give it to him. It was just a hunch. Jordan, be patient. You never need search for trouble. It will find you. 
Sam's advice made some sense, and I went back to the tambourine. Chris was switching on the front lights when I got there. Hageman wasn't around, and neither was Eddie Gamble now. Only the girl still seated at the front table. She turned quickly as I came in, then looked disappointed. Oh, what happened to the boyfriend, Marguerite? Why, uh, he wanted me to wait. For what? Where is he? Well, Mr. Hageman phoned shortly after you left to arrange a new meeting place. Where? Oh, I don't know. Eddie talked to him. Sure. This time he wanted you to stay here, out of the way, so you wouldn't queer the deal. Well, Eddie knows how I feel. Marguerite, Hageman has it set up to sell Eddie something, right? Why, A lot I... of diamonds, like this one here. Mr. Jordan, how did you find out? All sorts of ways. But this one isn't... Don't worry about it. Hageman has plenty left. How much is Eddie paying? A hundred thousand, maybe? Well, he wouldn't want me to say. Fifty thousand? Well, much less than they're actually worth. You know, people don't deal in diamonds this way unless there's something wrong. Of course, but what can I do? Ever since the deal started, Eddie's thought and talked about nothing else. I can't reason with him. Sure. It happens to people. Yes. Greed can change a person so much. Oh, Chris. Yeah, Rock? Eddie Gamble got a phone call a while ago. Did you hear any of it? How could I help it here? All about a fistful of diamonds. At a good price, he kept saying. Did you get where he was going, Chris? Sure. The Dervish Bar. You know, that joint down in the Nile toward Bullock. Come on, Marguerite. I think we'd better join them. I locked the jewel carefully away in my office safe, and then we were driving for the Dervish Bar. It took a half hour to make it through the dark streets, and we got there just too late. Sidney Hageman was in front at the curb, squeezing himself into a taxi that was off and gone. So it looked like the deal was finished. And we were sure of it when we saw Eddie Gamble standing under a dim streetlight a little way down, jostling a leather pouch in his hand. We were too late again as two natives with gleaming knives swung toward him out of the shadows. Eddie! Eddie, look out! He fought back without a chance. We kept running, but before we got there, the natives suddenly turned and vanished. Only one of the knives was still there. Eddie! Eddie, darling! Very easy with him. Oh, what's happened to you? My great... They didn't get the diamonds... Try it. I don't care, darling. It's you. It's you. Here. Take... Take them. I... Eddie! Oh. Why didn't he listen to me? You'd better come away, Marguerite. Give me the pot. No. Give it to me. Come on. No, nobody will ever have them. What do you mean? These awful diamonds cost Eddie's death. They're to blame for everything. Nobody will ever have them. Marguerite, wait. Come back. She kept going wildly right toward the bank of the Nile. She didn't stop till she was at the water's edge. Before I could stop her, she tore open the pouch and threw the jewels out over the water. Scattered pinpoints of fire that disappeared into the black, swirling river. Del Monte Foods is presenting tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. I know most of you like tomato juice. Maybe you like it with a squeeze of lemon or a dash of Worcestershire sauce. But the first time you try Del Monte tomato juice, try it just as is. And I think you'll get the surprise of your life. I know I did. I just didn't think it was possible for a tomato juice to be so fresh tasting and natural tasting. Really, Del Monte is a remarkably good tomato juice, friends. Just notice the fragrance when you pour it. If anything ever reminded you of a plump, juicy, fresh tomato picked fully ripe off the vine, that's it. You simply can't mistake that Del Monte presses this juice from the finest tomatoes. And they've packed it so fast and under such close quality control that what they've delivered in the way of rich, tangy, natural flavor is something very special. Why, it's so refreshing. My family drinks tomato juice between meals now. And think how good it is for them. Yes, if you like the flavor of fresh, ripe tomatoes, friends, you ought to be drinking Del Monte tomato juice. Get several cans at your grocer's tomorrow. And now we take you back to Cairo and tonight's Rocky Jordan story, Foolproof. Jewels were gone now, somewhere in the mud at the bottom of the Nile. All I could do was call Sam Sabaya to pick up the late Eddie Gamble. 
We got Marguerite to her hotel. She was in no shape to talk about anything just then, so we called it a night. I was sure there was something more here than an attempted robbery murder by a couple of Arabs. But it wasn't until the next evening that Sam buzzed me to come to headquarters. Marguerite was there. We went over what had happened, but I could tell Sam had something else on his mind. Jordan, you are sure you could not identify Eddie Gamble's assailant? No, Sam. They look like any of a thousand others. And you, Marguerite? I'm afraid not, Captain. It was so dark. Everything happened so quickly. Mm. Nonetheless, we will make every effort to find them. It doesn't matter now. If I only could have stopped Eddie before... Yes, yes, I know. Most regrettable. All just for a handful of diamonds. How could he think it was worth it? Who can answer? It is written that avarice is the brother of misery. Well, that seems to be all. And what about Hagerman, Sam? He was in on the beginning. Kindly keep me advised of your whereabouts, Marguerite. I may wish to see you again. I'll be at my hotel. Goodbye, Captain. Mr. Jordan. Good day. Goodbye, Marguerite. Sam, don't tell me this is all. Most certainly not, Jordan. Now come with me. I followed Sam out and we got into his limousine. He likes a waiting game, so I held up the questions as we drove across to the Azbekia sector. We pulled up in front of a big mansion, half Egyptian style, with a few columns thrown in for the right effect. A servant let us in, and Sam asked for Mr. Claude Morgan. The name was familiar. A wealthy member of the British crowd. He came down right away. Captain Sabaya, it's very kind of you to give my call your personal attention. A valuable diamond theft demands my attention, Mr. Morgan. Diamond theft, Sam? Uh, uh, this is Mr. Jordan. A pleasure, Mr. Jordan. If I... you'll step into the library. Please be seated. Thank you. Now, Mr. Morgan, if you will tell us exactly what happened. May I explain that I've been on a business trip to Italy? When I got back, the diamonds were gone from my wall safe. Would you have any idea when the theft occurred? No, Captain. I was away for almost a month, returning only yesterday. I did not discover the theft until this afternoon, when I called you. It begins to look like my hunch was right, Sam. As you say, Jordan. I was not aware of this when you talked to me yesterday. I do not understand, Captain. A man known to have a large number of diamonds on his person was in Mr. Jordan's cafe yesterday, a very fat man named Hagerman. Hagerman? Then you know of him? Uh, yes, I've had some association with him. Like but I, I said, don't... Sam, find him. I shall, Jordan. But the perplexing problem remains that of the evidence. We know that he had some jewels, but how can one say that they were from Mr. Morgan's safe? Yeah, I see what you mean. The jewels are now lost at the bottom of the Nile River. But... That's incredible. If what you say is true... Hey, wait, Sam. They're all gone except one. Still in my office safe. Oh, yes. Of course, I'd quite forgotten. Say, Mr. Morgan, could you tell if the diamond I have is one of yours? Oh, I could, yes. The stones were insured, and each piece listed and described separately. I could surely tell. Let's get it, Sam. Jordan, I have matters at headquarters. Please bring the stone there for Mr. Morgan to see, say, in two hours, if that is agreeable. By all means, Captain. Two hours. I'll be there. Sam and I went out together. He dropped me at the tambourine, and I promised to let him know what cooked. The night crowds were just coming in, but Chris wasn't around. I wondered about that as I went through the cafe and opened my office door. Chris! Rocky! Uh, take it easy. I'll get the gag off. Ah, uh, that's better. Oh, am I glad you got here, Rock. The cords in my wrists are killing me. Uh, just a sec. I'll have you loose. Come on, now. What happened? Well, I... Uh... I heard a noise back here. When I came in, a couple of Arab natives were tearing up the place. You're lucky they didn't put a knife in you. Don't I know it. They grabbed me and tied me up. Yeah. What about the safe? Well, they couldn't get in there. Well, we better make sure. But I'm telling you, Rock, they didn't open the safe. Chris, think again. The diamond's gone. Gone? But ain't that it? No. There's a stone here, all right. Same size, but not the diamond. Look at it. Yeah. Not so clear. No sparkle like the other one. Well, what the heck goes? I was here all the time. That's what I want to know. How could anyone get in the safe, take the diamond, and on top of that, leave this one in its place? Maybe somebody switched them before you put it in the safe. No. Oh, what I put in there was the diamond, I'm certain. Well, you sure got me, Rock. It all makes sense. Everything makes sense, Chris. When you get the answer. I made sure Chris was all right. Sent him out front to help catch up with the customers. I closed the safe, put the stone in my pocket, and went out the back way to get to my car. 
I was as far from any answer as the Earth is from Mars. But somebody could tell, including a couple of native Arabs. I met them sooner than I expected. <coughs> Hold him at the wall, Jehoshaphat. As you say, Negab, the knife is at the throat. Yeah, I saw the other one. For each man, there is the knife. Sure. Like the one you used on Eddie Gamble, what? <coughs> we love life, Effendi. We would not like to take yours. You weren't so squeamish the last time. We kill only when we are told. So give it to us. Quickly. Give you what? The stone. The stone which you have. Search the Nile. You'll find a lot of them. Only the stone which you have. At once, Effendi. It's in my right coat pocket. Make up a look. So. Yes, Jehoshaphat. This is the one. You two guys collect rocks for a hobby? <coughs> we have another. But we love life, Effendi. So we spare yours. So I'll send you a thank you card. Where to? No address. We fold our tents like the Arabs. And they silently stole away. Now it was about as plain as a Chinese puzzle with all the pieces missing. A diamond is taken from my safe. A new stone is put in its place. Undoubtedly one that's worthless. Then they steal the new one. That's how it looked. And if that wasn't it, what was? I didn't know, but pretty soon I was pounding at the door of Abu Simbel, the jeweler. His wife finally let me in, and I waited till he came down, pulling on a robe and straightening his fez. Ah, Mr. Jordan again. You have brought the diamond to my place of business. The diamond's gone now, Mr. Simbel. Then why do you wake me at this hour? Because another stone showed up in its place. Only, uh, it's gone too. Uh, Effendi, uh, perhaps the sleep is not yet from my mind. Look, you said something about making further tests. Is that to name a price or to make sure it was a diamond? Even the humble jeweler is sometimes fooled by what he first sees. I put the diamond you saw in my safe yesterday. A while ago, I found another stone in its place. But the sparkle was gone. So, I was mistaken. What do you mean? Tell me. The test would have shown a diamond is double refractory. Not so the jargon of Ceylon. Jargon? Some call it the zircon. When placed in silver sand and subjected to great heat, it becomes clear and takes on great brilliance for a time. For how long? Mm, two days, perhaps. The luster then fades. So you're telling me the stone I had was a jargoon. It never was a diamond. No, a star sent from heaven. I am most sorry, Mr. Jordan, if my mistake has brought you trouble. Oh, no, no trouble at all, Mr. Symbol. You've told me just what I wanted. I left Abu Simbel and got to my car, and I knew where I was going. So the whole fistful of diamonds Hageman had sold Eddie Gamble weren't diamonds either. Only jargoons from Ceylon. In just ten minutes, I was pressing on the buzzer to Marguerite's hotel room, first floor rear. She was still up. Oh, Mr. Jordan. One last visit, Marguerite. Please, what are you doing? You didn't say you were coming here. I was until now. But things change, don't they? I don't understand. Like a lot of hopped-up jargoons. Jargoons? Yeah, like the ones you deliberately planned to throw away, right into the Nile. But you know better than that, Mr. Jordan. Why would I plan such a thing? Just so they wouldn't be found till too late, if at all. But I was beside myself. I didn't know what I was doing. You saw yourself. Wasn't I supposed to? Why, anyhow, the jewels are gone. Sure. Hageman makes the sale for plenty of money, and then you get rid of them. Only it happens the jewel stuff is penny ante. There's a murder involved. Your boyfriend, Eddie Gamble. Not as far as I'm concerned. A couple of stray Arabs did that. All foolproof. I thought they were strays, too, at first. But when they jumped me for the jewel this evening, I saw they were working for somebody who tied in with a diamond job. I wish I knew what you were talking about, Mr. Jordan. You know, Hagerman made quite a mistake when he left that phony diamond on my tambourine floor. It put a big hole in your scheme. Somebody had to get it back. Did they? Come to think of it, who knew I had that jewel? You did. I showed it to you in my tambourine. You're not trying to accuse me You're of up the... to your ears in murder, Marguerite. Maybe there are a few things you'd like to tell me now. Why should I tell you anything? It's either me or Sam Sabaya. Make your choice. Why, if I tell you, you... Mr. Jordan! She was looking at the window, but before I turned, the shots came. <laughs> they were for Marguerite, and she dropped. Then, without thinking, I ran over to the shattered window. A man was running up the passageway to the street, and I went after him. When he turned, I ducked back. The slugs cut the wall over my head, and I was moving again. So was he. The next shots were thrown wild over his shoulder. 
After the last one, he dropped the gun. And we did the 440 till I reached him a block and a half further on and tried for a flying tackle. It took his wind and the fight was over. But I kept it up, dragging him to his feet and over under a light where I could see who it was. I got a surprise. The kind that finally told me what it was all about. He was the man from the big house in the Azbekia sector. Claude Morgan. In just a moment, Rocky Jordan returns to conclude tonight's story. It's a sure sign of spring when people start breaking out the picnic baskets and polishing up the barbecue forks. That means outdoor meals ahead. And that means Del Monte catsup to me. There just isn't a catsup made that does as much for a picnic sandwich or a grilled hamburger. Yes, and from the way Del Monte catsup is disappearing off the shelves at the grocery store, plenty of women must think so, too. Try it yourself. Pour it out, bright and red and tempting. Get the fragrance of those fine spices and just taste the special richness of flavor Del Monte gets out of ripe tomatoes with that wonderful ingredient, pineapple vinegar. You'll say you've absolutely never enjoyed catsup flavor like this before. Well, I'd say it's just the catsup you'd expect from Del Monte. Why, I doubt if there's a woman in the West who doesn't know what that name means in quality and flavor. You'll like everything about Del Monte catsup, friends, including its low price. If you haven't tried it, how about tomorrow? Back now to Rocky Jordan for the conclusion of tonight's story. Well, Claude Morgan came along to headquarters peaceably enough. By the time he was able to think straight again, he was already booked and in a cell for the murder of Marguerite. Right quick after that, Sam went out looking for Sidney Hagerman. I went back to the tambourine and just before closing time, Sam came in and joined me at a back table. I will only be a moment, Jordan. Oh, no rush, Sam. Sit down. A couple of coffees here, Chris. Right away, Rock. Oh, an excellent idea. Jordan, you will be interested to know that we have found Sidney Hagerman. Oh, good. That leaves only a couple of stray Arabs. There's a call out. They will be found. However, a few things are not quite clear to me. Better check my ideas with Claude Morgan. Figures he's the kingpin in the whole scheme. Mm, yes, the scheme. An insurance jip, Sam. A big elaborate setup to convince us that Morgan's diamonds were stolen. He probably has them tucked away in Italy someplace. You might contact the police there. If Morgan himself does not tell me. Ah, the coffee. Oh, thanks, Chris. Sure, Rocky. <clears throat> now, Jordan, this strange tale of the jargoon. Oh, it isn't important where Hageman got them. The idea was for me to see them at the tambourine and then to know of their sale to Eddie Gamble. Mm. Then Gamble was not a party to the scheme. No, just the fall guy. Marguerite knew how to use him, too. Gamble gets killed, Marguerite goes wild and throws the jewels into the Nile. Now everybody thinks Morgan's jewels are gone. And there's all the proof he wants. I see. Meanwhile, what is at the bottom of the Nile are only jargoons. Morgan has the real one and can still file an insurance claim. With all the proof he needs that the diamonds are stolen. Except for one big slip. The stone which Hagerman accidentally left on your floor. Sure. I take it they had put the heat to the jargoons to make them look like diamonds the day before. If he'd gotten back the one I had before it changed to its original color, we still might not have the truth. A great deal of trouble for only a faded jargoon. Well, the insurance scheme and Morgan's part in it was new to me till Marguerite got killed. And when I caught up with Morgan, it all cleared. Mm. It seems that Marguerite and Hagerman chose a dangerous employer. Yeah. I'd guess Morgan planned to knock off Hagerman just like he did Marguerite. Then nobody would know. <clears throat> this is excellent coffee. Junior, how do you make it? <laughs> My professional secret, Sam. But I'll, uh, I'll trade it for some of your professional secrets. <laughs> Need you find that necessary, Jordan? You have a way of learning what you would know without my help. For 
for the finest in tomato flavor, enjoy the whole family of Del Monte tomato products. Del Monte catsup and chili sauce. Del Monte tomato sauce and tomato juice. And Del Monte whole peeled tomatoes. Remember, buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Rocky Jordan, written by Larry Roman and Gomer Cool, stars Jack Moyles in the title role with Jane of as Sam Sabaya, and is produced and directed by Cliff Howell, with original music composed and conducted by Richard Arundt. Remember, you have a date next week at the Cafe Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. Same time, same station. And the story is The Strange Fate of Professor Amar. When it's real corn patch flavor you want, just ask for Del Monte corn, either golden cream style or vacuum-packed whole kernel. Yes, if you want rich, sweet, melt-in-your-mouth butter tender corn, look for Del Monte, the brand that always puts flavor first. Larry Thor speaking. Rocky Jordan is presented over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our latest adventure with Rocky Jordan. And don't forget, we'll be back with more adventure tomorrow. The Tales of the Texas Rangers going live at 5 p.m. GMT. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a brand spanking new podcast. It's called Sunday Night Mystery. If you get a minute to check it out, it's a real crime, true crime podcast. I think you'll enjoy it. Don't forget as well, if you get a minute or two, do check out our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.